le TGV numéro 424, départ initialement prévu à 20h12, entrera en gare, voie 4. Forty-eight hours after leaving the Indian Himalayas, we find ourselves back in Le Grave, France. And what a contrast it is for the three of us, and how amazing it is to be back in the Alps. I remember standing in the empty streets of Le Grave for the first time, admiring the windswept glaciers hanging 2,000 meters above me, not knowing that this place would change my skiing forever. Being here feels like we're coming home to old friends and familiar mountains. Friends like Joe Vallone and Bruno Flory have taught us about living and surviving in these mountains. I came here as a skier and then I realized it's not just a ski place. It's another world, so close to the real world but so, so different because without being thousand kilometers away from anything in 2010 to, to be able to switch off with the whole world and it's parfait to live here. I would say it's eight months of happiness and four months of craziness. And the four months of craziness it's winter. La Grave means to me a lot of freedom, skiing, natural mountain. And what I like here is there's no rules. Nature tells you when to go, when not to go. You feel completely free here. This mountain speaks to you and she'll tell you when you're doing something wrong right away. The mountain tells you where to go, it tells you where to turn, it tells you where to stop. It'll only let you pass with certain methods at certain times, and you, you just have to keep your eyes open all the time and always be listening. She gets grumpy, and she has a she has a harsh way of showing it sometimes. And I think that's the beauty of this place: is the amount of homework you have to do before you jump into something, and nobody's doing that work for you. There is no rope, there is no sign, there is no there's no bombs being thrown every morning, and there's no one putting a rope around a two, three hundred foot cliff.
The size and the magnitude of this place, I think, is, is really the big attraction. There's a lifetime worth of lines here, and eight seasons later, it seems like it's still turning new corners almost every day. And uh, what you ski today is entirely different tomorrow. Powder's easy, everyone can ski powder, but can you ski the terrain in its current condition? And can you use the right technique and the right turn? I think that's the beauty in, the, in moving through this terrain. And uh, this place has taught me to be a terrain skier. And if I don't have powder, it's okay. I can still go out and move through the terrain. I remember the first time Joe shared with us what he calls the best lift access run in the world. And I remember knowing I would have to traverse above 900 feet of exposure across a rocky 50 degree slope and that there would be no room for mistakes. This place teaches you to slow down a little bit. This mountain doesn't really care or know that you're an expert. I think for me now, I ski with fear more than anything. Having seen so many amazing people fall here, and I think being afraid is good because you know there's something to be afraid of. And here, there's always a hazard around every corner. If you don't know they're there, then you're not aware. Think about how you were on such a fine line moving through these mountains and how free and alive they make you feel. They say the birds here carry the souls of fallen skiers and climbers who once lived and died in these mountains. When you watch them soaring in the wind, you imagine who they might have been. If they could speak, I wonder what they would tell us. <laughs>